Bonjour everyone, I am Yann, your favorite friendly Frenchman, and welcome to this first episode of Exploring Parc Ciel Bleu. Now before we jump right into it, I feel like I should remind you what my intention is with the Exploring series. Basically my intention is to show you as many details in the park as possible and tell you the inspiration behind them. Now that this is out of the way, let's jump right in. Episode 1. Entrée, Place d'Antan and Bord de Rive. When I first started Parc Ciel Bleu, I didn't know what to do. I just gave up on an almost finished Golden Knot Park, but I learned two things while building it. One, that making a large park was a pretty daunting task for a beginner like me. And two, that the emulation of natural spaces was my strong suit. So I wondered what parks near me were somewhat small but immersed you in nature and I immediately thought of Belloir. It's a humble park in Belgium near Iper that I've been going to for years because it was one of the closest theme parks to where I lived as a kid. The natural aspect of it you can find right as you exit the entrance tunnel and cross the main river on the wooden bridge. As for the architecture of the entrance, I wanted something simple that would look like it had been there for more than 50 years and that was somewhat reminiscent of Bellwards. But brace yourselves, I've used a lot of frontier blueprints on this entrance. For instance, this one is the vintage Victorian info booth. I didn't change much on this one because I really like the overall look of it, but I wanted to replace that ugly white color with something that could be echoing the tones of the park. The brown is echoing the dirt and the wood and the color green is reminiscent of the foliage, of course. Next up, we've got this turnstile that has a QR code reader on it. Being an Echo Park, Park Ciel Bleu wouldn't have any sort of paper ticket. Instead, you would have to download your ticket on the Parks app to enter. The app can also load your reservations as well as your Eco Pass for faster queue times. Now that we went through the turnstile, we come face to face with the entrance building, which, believe it or not, was at first the vintage Victorian park entrance blueprint. Here's my own take on it. From the bottom to the top, the most noticeable changes are the first aid, the toilets and the ATMs on each side of the building. Whereas the original blueprint has three entrance gates where my path now runs. The welcome sign has been changed to a Parc Ciel Bleu one that is colored to match the French flag and speaking of French flags, I have a custom one on each tower. I also added smaller flags behind the lettering that are blowing in the same direction as the bigger ones in order to sell the realism. I don't really like penguins anyway. A small change that I've also made was the amount of windows that there were on each side. Minus 5 and the original as 10 it made much more sense with what was inside my version of the building. To be honest, if I relied so much on Frontier Blueprints was because when I first started the park, I didn't know where I was going with it. I just wanted to experience new things and modifying existing buildings was a way for me to gain confidence in building things. Speaking of gaining confidence, here are the walls of special thanks, and the first one is to Moomin Nail Socks, thanks to whom I found building accessible and super fun. Then we have the devs, Frontier, thanks for making two games that kindled my creativity, once as a child, now as an adult. Then my dad, thanks to whom the first game I'd ever play was Roller Coaster Tycoon, making me a coaster fan at 4 years old. Then we have my dear friend Iron Maddie, thanks to whom I discovered the Planko console community. Seriously, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys if it weren't for this lovely guy. Really, go check him out. And on the other side of the entrance, we've got Albris and Warren G. Thanks for being the ones I look up to in our community. It's been a while since I heard from them, so I hope they're okay. The Iron Gamers, everyone in Maddie's Discord, thanks for being the wonderful human beings that you all are. Thanks to my mom for making me appreciate the simpler things in life, and of course, the most important one of all, thanks to you for being curious enough to give Parc Ciel Bleu a chance. Now let's walk through the entrance building and we're greeted by this awesome sightline. Seriously, the Ferris wheel never gets old. I love it. It's a great way to introduce you to the fact that I really like to work on my sightlines while building. If the view doesn't work, then the build doesn't work at all. On the back side of the building are staff rooms labeled Lost and Found and Security Office. 
I hate the look of staff rooms, so I always try to hide them behind doors and if I can find role-playing purposes for them, then worth it. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, this is Place d'Antan, which means Old Times Plaza. Basically, this plaza was the first thing built in the park more than 50 years ago. It was before it was even going to be a theme park. The very first shop I placed in this park is this Street Fox Coffee, which I rebranded Café de la Forestière. Café de la Forestière is a modified vintage Victorian Street Fox Coffee, which you can actually find on my workshop page. Here's how the base version looked. The most noticeable change is the top section that I completely removed. I also changed the color of some features to better match the Street Fox Coffee brand. I also added a bit of foliage too. The first thing I've ever built on my own though was this little terrace on the side. I'm still so proud of it. And on the back side, I just added a bit of clutter. Even though it is pretty simple, I still like this building very much because it was really my first. So naturally, I copied the design four times on the plaza. First with the Missy Good, it's a reverse design though, so I had to redo it from scratch. And the colors also match the brand, which I have renamed Patisserie Mademoiselle. And if we run to the other side of the plaza, Come on, run, 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 run. We have a Monsieur Frit, which basically is a French name, so I didn't have to rebrand it. Same with Le Vincet. And many people don't know how to say Le Vincet, but now you know. That's great. That's your favorite friendly Frenchman for you. I love the interior of Le Vincet. But now let's move on to another area and the final area for today, which is Borderive. Now, Borderive is basically close to the water, you know. It's how it translates. And right away we have the Bistro, which is the fifth oldest Bistro in France. This is really hard to say because my French brain is messing with my English brain. Now, across from there, you have a backstage area that connects to the entrance with the first hidden crow, actually. Because the kitchen is right there, you know, that's the door right there, and I try to see the chimney, but no, I think I have to... Let's see... Yes, there is the chimney, because, yeah, there is the kitchen right under, and this is Place des Alpes, we won't go there just yet. Another word that people have struggled to say in spotlights was this one, les oiseaux. <laughs> I know the French language doesn't make any sense sometimes, but yeah. Right across from there, you have the first uh, water refiller, or whatever you want to call it. The thing to refill your bottles. Uh, you know, because Eco Park, you have a manhole, you have pipes, you have the water jet. I love this thing to bits, really. Uh, and there's also a vending machine inside, so people can basically use it. Now, uh, right there we have the backstage tour, which will be in the next episode, stay tuned for that. But let's go on our first ride, uh, you know, the Cheroplane, the Les Oiseaux. And this is just the most beautiful ride in Planet Coaster, the flat ride, at least. And we can see the first eco queue as well, so the way the eco queue works is you have this... Uh, eco pass on your phone and you have to scan it and yeah as my park is based around realism uh, you have speakers that are visible though they are painted green so that you cannot see them um maybe we should go on a ride because it looks pretty fun right we i have to make some noise because it looks fun Yay! No, really, if you can look at this thing, the views are insane, and I, I, I love this thing. I just rode one, well, basically, actually, it was at Belle Wild as well, so it was last weekend, and I had a lot of fun on it. So, let's get out of there before we get hit 
in the face by a chair. <laughs> the thing is going again. Yeah, let's exit this thing. And we exit on the other side of the bistro, but you know, it's a bistro. There isn't much to see. It's very plain looking. Oh, pigeon. Um, but uh, yeah, basically a bistro is something really basic that is basically serving fries and, and maybe beef or something like this. But look at this view. Believe it or not, uh, the whole border Rive area was... Oh, and we have Bar Border Rive, of course. The whole Border Rive area uh, was planned since day one. Uh, I wanted a restaurant overlooking the river. But uh, this is literally the last area I did. Just because my brain was freaking out at the idea of making a circular building. And then with the water treatment plant, uh, which we will see in the backstage door, actually. Uh, I did the, the little circular thing with the different blueprints and it looked amazing. And so I started doing this, uh, this bistro. I think it's time to say goodbye, actually. I know, it's sad, but we will see each other again next week for episode 2, which will be on the backstage tour. Thanks for being here with me for the first episode of Exploring Parc Ciel Bleu. If you liked it, well, please leave a like or a comment on the video and consider subscribing to avoid missing out on the future episodes. This has been Yann, your favorite friendly Frenchman, and I'll see you in the next one. A bientôt!